Thank you, David. And uh, good day to everybody and a special welcome to all of those of you who are being introduced to the RPM group for the first time. Um, just like to talk about the company for a little while um, and moving on, we'll um, basically the RPM automotive group is a leading play in the in the automotive uh, aftermarket sector. Next slide, please. Um, RPM has a national footprint. We are involved in manufacturing, importing, wholesale distribution um, of a wide range of automotive parts and accessories, including um, tires on uh, passenger, um, commercial and industrial. Let's move on. Um, there are a number of favorable um, uh, in industry fundamentals, obviously we're, we're in a quite a large industry. Um, automotive sector is, is enormous. Um, we've recently invested further in the four wheel drive space. Um, we have a vertically integrated business as I mentioned earlier, whereby we design, manufacture, wholesale. We, we do have, we do wholesale uh, or we sell to our retail businesses as well. So as our retail platform grows, so our um, wholesale business obviously um, benefits. Um, we have a number of leading brands. We're, um, we're very well known in the racing fraternity, um, motorsport being the, um, the showpiece, if you like, of the automotive industry. Um, yeah, as we said, we, we, we have diversified businesses. We're across multiple areas. I'm going to get into more detail on this later. So I'm not going to read everything. I know all of you can read. And at any time, you can always download this um, presentation and get all the detail you need. Um, experience board, myself and, and the guys around me have been in the automotive industry for 25 plus years. We understand it well. We understand the space we play in. And... Um, We've been doing it for some time now. And uh, we have a clear growth strategy. We understand where the opportunities are. We're specifically in what we call sunrise sectors of the automotive industry. And um, we are looking to expand all the time, both organic and acquisitional growth. Let's move to the next slide, please. So our business is built on four pillars, as we like to say. Uh, wheels and tires, which is a wholesale tire business. We have a number of um, warehouses around Australia. We import um, wholesale and distribute uh, tires out of those different um, warehouses. We specifically, we, we are well, specialized, if you like, in commercial and industrial tires, commercial being truck and bus and uh, industrial being um, off-road tires or uh, mining, agriculture, forestry, and heavy earth moving equipment. We also do a range of uh, passenger and four-wheel drive tires as well. Um, we then have our retail division, which we call repairs and roadside. Repairs and roadside is basically B2B or B2Fleet retail tire, commercial and industrial tire centers. So um, we would fit or, or service fleets of trucks or, or trucking companies with um, new tires and wheels. Um, our motorsport business is a market leader in the space. We do, um, uh, we own our own brand. That's where the, the RPM brand comes from. We're actually the only FIA approved uh, race suit manufacturer in Australia. So we do custom suits for uh, a number of the top racing car drivers, as well as anyone who uh, would like to have their own uh, um, race suit that uh, is designed for them. And finally, we have our performance and accessories division, which is um, uh, both manufacturing, wholesale and retail. We have uh, all kinds of accessories um, that we sell through that, that division, as well as a platform um, of a franchise group that we have um, as the distribution platform. Next slide, please. Um, just a few key uh, 
uh, salient details, if you like, on the market and the opportunities. The Australian automotive parts and maintenance sector represents about $34 billion in annual revenue. Um, sector is highly fragmented and RPM has a strong track record of driving consolidation, but um, the, the sector is consolidating, so it is a good time for that. Um, RPM has a vertically integrated business model with uh, increased operating leverage to drive earnings growth. And uh, quite recently, we've we acquired a business that uh, has greater design capabilities, which we will use in other manufacturing um, uh, businesses, both internal and external. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, we have a basic acquisition uh, strategy. We have we basically buy businesses on, on a formula. Um, I won't go into too much detail of, of the formula. It's all there for anyone to see, but pretty much we, we, we try and identify the correct businesses in the right areas and, um, and apply our formula. Just to give you an, an, an understanding in uh, FY22, so this current year we've completed eight acquisitions, building on five done in the previous year. Um, we've had significant growth, both uh, organic and acquisition or inorganic. Um, and uh, yeah, we have many opportunities uh, to unlock even further uh, synergies. Next slide, please. Just a quick timeline of different businesses that we've, uh, we've acquired this year and some investments we've done um, in other words, either green fields or just expansion on businesses. I think we can move to the next slide. Some of the highlights, um, FY22 highlights, we've had record growth in revenue and EBITDA, uh, eight strategic acquisitions to complement businesses that will deliver meaningful cost and revenue synergies. Our businesses are quite similar, so there are a number of synergies that we, we achieve um, as we bolt them on. Um, and strong investment strategy to support rapid growth. Just some guidance that we've been able to provide. Uh, FY22 revenue target, uh, targets of in excess of $80 million and uh, EBITDA targets in excess of $7.2 million. Um, we've had 18.5% organic growth this year. Um, and um, yeah, if you annualize our turnover run rate currently, we're sitting um, a little over $120 million. The outlook for FY23, um, we, yeah, we're looking to consolidate a number of acquisitions that we've recently done, just get them down and, and, and ensure that we get the value out of them, whether it be through the cross-selling opportunities that we have both in, the OEM and aftermarket sectors, or in um, transferring products through different distribution channels. Um, further growth opportunities to continue the, the, the company's expansion strategy, a focus on earnings growth, specifically in the repairs and roadside and performance and accessories divisions, which we've achieved through economies of scale. So, so the two areas that we focus on, are, are focusing our growth on is in that retail tire industry as well as our uh, performance and accessories division. Um, further improvements in trading conditions as COVID-19 restriction ease and, and activities increases. Our, our retail businesses were hurt in Q1 of this year as a result of um, pretty much Metro Melbourne and, and uh, Metro Sydney being shut down. But um, uh, as the years progress, obviously they've, they've recovered quite nicely. Um, and finally, uh, continued implementation of best practice management in inventory and supply chain. Our, our business is, is heavy on stock. And um, yeah, we, we do a lot of importing and, um, and distribution. And as a result, um, we need to have the stock when our customers need it. Next slide, please. Um, that pretty much comes to the end. There are some more slides after this, which um, you guys can go through 
uh, giving a little bit more detail on the business and the shareholding and the directors. But um, I think that pretty much sums up or gives you a good overview of exactly what the RPM group is. Um, yeah, thanks, Clive. Great presentation. There uh, are a number of questions coming through. I always love it when uh, a question starts with, hi, Clive, I love the presentation. So uh, that's a big tick from the audience. Um, one question is, is around market share, do you have an idea what your, your current market share looks like and therefore what the growth opportunity is? Okay, so we're in a number of sectors. So I'll, I'll give you the, the key sector for us is, is uh, commercial and industrial tyres. Commercial and industrial tyres, the, the, the um, industry is in excess of $2 billion. Um, to give you an idea, we, um, our current wholesale value in that space is in and around the $45 million range. So um, we've got a long way to go. To be fair, though, we, we play in a, a particular sandpit in that industry. So uh, that industry is divided into tier one, tier two, and tier three. Tier, tier one would be all the brands that everybody knows, you know, the, 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 the well-known brands. The tier three is Chinese brands, and we, we play in that space. Um, when we got involved in 2016, the, the industry, the, the commercial industry was about 800 million and about 20% of that was, was uh, taken up by the Chinese manufacturers. It's now about 1.2 billion and about 35% of the space is, is uh, taken up by Chinese manufacturers. So, so our, our industry is growing, but our, high, our, our portion of the industry is growing even faster. So we believe that there's plenty of opportunity for growth there. That was the point I was going to make, that uh, you're a well-established brand in a growing industry. Uh, so the opportunity there is significant across all the different business units that you have at your disposal. Yes. Um, um, it, it just just to, to digress, one of our other companies, um, Revolution Race Gear, is the market leader in its space. So it has in excess of 35% of, of, of um, the market share. So um, yeah, you've got two very different um, businesses there, but uh, as the market leader, all we do is we look to increase the range or the products that we can sell. I like to say more lines on an invoice, effectively. Same customers, just offering them more product. And in terms of M&A, do you have a capacity or is there always the ability to either sell fund or bring in funding for the right M&A? Um, we have a formula that we buy on and the formula is based on how we get our funding as well as an earn out strategy so that um, uh, we, we have the key stakeholders invested. We like to take them along. We, we believe in cultural fit. We, we're very, very people focused. So we, we think that people make businesses. As a result, it doesn't make sense to buy a business um, and then eliminate the, the drivers or the, or the champions of that business because uh, generally the business goes with them. We've, we've been on that side of the, of the table in the past and uh, we understand that. And we understand how uh, guys who may own a business that might be too big to be small and too small to be big caught in that funny zone, how it's quite hard for them to integrate into a bigger organization. So we, we help them with the transition. And when you bring a business in, there's obviously the financial, there's the people piece, but do you find that inside your organization, the organic growth that comes from those businesses uh, is much superior to what they would have achieved in their singular form? Oh, absolutely. So in, in most of our businesses, we, we supply, our wholesale businesses supply our retail businesses. So if we buy a business that is already a customer of ours, for instance, we'd sell more product to them. They'd make more margin out of the product they're buying from us. And we'd offer them, we'd, we'd, we'd cross-pollinate the customer base. So, and added to that, when we set up, businesses we like to um we like the vendor to participate in the value we bring so effectively if we can make the business make more money we give the vendor the opportunity 
to actually um, uh, participate in that. So super profit performance bonuses. Understood. Um, now, just to recap for people, through your growth strategy, what are the divisions you're focusing on from a growth perspective and why? So we call the one division repairs and roadside. A better explanation is just um, our retail tire division, which is B2B or B2 fleet. Our reason for it is coverage. We we want to look after our customers better. Our customers who are generally transportation uh, industry people um, would have depots in multiple locations. They'd be using multiple service providers. We want to make their lives easier by offering them them service more on a on a more national level. That's the one business one division that we've been focusing on. The other one is the performance and accessories division. Um, I said that we joined the tyre industry in 19, 19, uh, 2016. We've been in the accessories industry since 1996. We understand that very, very well. Um, it's, we've, we've seen unprecedented growth in that space over the last three or four or five or 10 years, probably um, uh, given a shot in the arm by COVID-19, no question about that. However, we don't see that that ending. We've we've invested recently quite heavily in the OEM side of that industry. Um, one of the businesses we we um, acquired is a an, a supplier to caravan and camper trailer manufacturers. We've recently invested in another business that um, caters to the aftermarket. We believe that we can cross pollinate both of those product ranges. And uh, we've already begun um, with the one and have seen some very, very um, favorable results. Clive, a great presentation, a really interesting company and a true hidden gem, a company to watch. We look forward to watching your success, financially uh, a well-established and very stable company. So congratulations on pulling all of those things together. Fantastic presentation, thanks for your time. Thank you very much, David.